Back on Inside Tennessee, continuing our conversation with Commissioner Ward, who represents the 4th District on County Commission. And you had a question about mental health. I, I we do. Were I have a follow-up on that. I've, I've been involved in a couple of roundtables on health in Tennessee, and mental health is the, been, is the one issue that everyone has talked about. Sure. You hear law enforcement say they don't have room for criminals because they've got drug people, they have folks with mental health, and it is a major issue across Tennessee. We have a short-term mental health ER that I think the state funded here as a pilot project. I think it's 16 beds maybe, yes, but it's three days max. So talk about that and have you, are sure. you involved with that and what do we need beyond that? I'm not involved in that directly. Um, so we have pretty good short term, some decent midterm. What The piece that we're missing here in Knox County is the long term. So when I say mental health facility, what I'm talking about is a long term mental health facility with enough beds to handle the volume that we have. Currently, we would have to send our people down to Chattanooga. One of the things that the sheriff has to deal with is they, he actually runs the largest mental health yeah. facility here, which is a wing in the prison. If not a wing, it's, it was it's a, pretty, it's a, pretty much the entire detention yeah, facility. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. pretty massive. I mean, we spend millions of dollars in drugs every year to, to uh, our taxpayer dollars to take care of these people. But if um, they're full and Chattanooga is full, they have to drive to Memphis sometimes just to and at our expense to get there, and they have to bring them back once they're done in Memphis. So it's a problem. It's a problem that we have. Um, biggest thing is going to be the capital, the money. Um, I th my idea was. You house the facility around the same um, campus as the as the um, jail already. You have the facilities there. You have the uh, remote courtrooms there. The cops are already there, bringing people back and forth. And the majority of our people will be probably from the prison itself. And that relieves a lot of stress on the prison as well. This way, we don't have to build another wing and pay more tax dollars locally for that. That's going to have to come from state and federal, though. We don't have enough here. Probably partnering with the city long term and partnering with the state, we can generate enough money to operate it. But the capital investment originally is going to have to come from the state. So we're going to have to put together a comprehensive plan here that we're going to have to pass both commission and city council and send it to the state and say, hey, this is what we want to do. This is where we want to put it. This is how much we think it's going to be. So they have to come together. There needs to be leadership to kind of create that kind of plan. What, what are you hearing from state lawmakers about yeah. that? Because right now they have been rejecting money at a pretty good clip. Uh, they, federal money. They yeah. re rejected mm -hmm. oh. um, more than a billion and a half dollars in expanded Medicaid benefits that we saw Governor Haslam try to to say we should we should. Um, not do that and at least do a pilot program with some some smaller dollars don't reject the whole thing and now the legislature is talking about doing that with almost two billion dollars in education money I say those two examples to say the state doesn't seem real willing to spend lots of money to tackle this issue sure I think the state's focused right now on the voucher program that is being rolled out I think that's where most of the political capital is being spent I don't I, I'm sure this is a priority but I don't think it's as high a priority for that for the, for the state level right now um, um, really, it comes down to us, the local politicians and just the local citizens lobbying their state representatives saying, hey, we really want this, we really need this. And I think we here locally as politicians have a responsibility to not just like make noise and say, hey, but actually put together a plan because the, the, the state's not just going to turn around and write a $100 million check and say, here you guys go, figure it out. They want to see what we're going to do with it, how we're going to do with it. And, and really the answer is, how much is it going to be to operate it long term? That's where the, the money comes in because it's a constant flow to our county. So, so Kyle, I guess the last point I'd like to make on that before we kind of transition, sure. I think that local government, city and county both, do a pretty good job of trying to put their wallets where their mouths are yes, when sir. it comes to that. However, I mean, John and, and you are right that the state just talks the talk, but they rarely walk the walk, and they certainly won't seek federal help, particularly while there's some level of democratic control in the federal system. So if that's the case, is there another alternative, like maybe contracting with an existing hospital that is struggling, you know, dollar for dollar yeah. uh, to do things where we could 
you know, rent a floor, so to speak, staff it, professionals, something like that versus build a new building, which I agree, we should have never shut down Lakeshore, but we did. Yes, sir. And building a new building won't be on your watch, probably won't be on any of our watches. No, probably not. So yeah. is that a possibility? Uh, I haven't explored that possibility personally. Um, it sounds like a good idea. Um, there's, that's the thing, there's, there's tons of great ideas. It's the execution of these ideas. I think one of the biggest issues we're gonna have is staffing. Right now, across the board, medically, staffing, everybody, everybody's having staffing issues. So not only building the hospital, but do we have an, a pipeline to actually staff the facility once we have it up and running? Are we working with our universities and our colleges to create nursing programs and create psychiatric programs where we can train the young adults or the, the, well, whoever? Well, we are, but they're leaving. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. We need to keep them here. So. Yeah. More to come on this, Cal Ward. We appreciate the time this morning, yes, and we will definitely stay in touch over the next seven months of your term. Awesome. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. We're back with a conversation about housing, in particular, a woman who knows it well, has been living it for the last 30 years with Habitat for Humanity. We're back after this.